All right, so hi, I'm Nostalgia64, and this is going to be a tutorial for Simpsons Hit and Run, all story missions category. Now, before I actually get into the main game, I'm going to have to go over some of the mod launcher, the Lucas mod launcher stuff that we use. Now, this only applies to if you're running on PC. If you're running on console, then you don't have to watch this, you just have to skip on to whenever I actually start talking about the game. So, for all other runners on PC, first thing you have to do is download Lucas's mod launcher from the Donut Team website, and I'll have a link down in the description for that. And once you actually get that, you'll be given an option. You'll have to go down to Open and then Launcher Settings, and then go to Advanced. Should be on the screen now. So you go to the Advanced Settings, and then it'll ask you for the Game EXE path. And then you'll just have to, you know, look through your files and find the path for, like the file is, yeah, simpsons.exe. So you'll send uh, the link to that into the mod launcher. And once that's done, then you'll be able to play the game. But first things first, you'll want to, or at least I would recommend, if you're going to be streaming this game, you play in windowed, like normally. Uh, that will be unticked, so just tick it, and then set your uh, resolution that you want to play in. I play in 640 by 480 just fits the best on my monitor. So that's all the basic stuff covered. Now into the actual mods that come with the mod launcher. So it comes with a bunch of pre-installed mods. So all the ones with this little green L, they come pre-installed with it. You're going to want to make sure that all of these are unticked, except for the frame limiter. Because the way it works is, if you're doing a run of the game, and you want to submit it to the speedrun.com leaderboards, Unless you have no mods apart from the frame limiter on. So if you have any mods at all that aren't the frame limiter, then your run will be rejected. So say you want to have, say, the speedometer on, or, I don't know, cheat keys or something. Well, that would be fairly obvious that you wouldn't be allowed that. But any kind of mod that isn't the frame limiter is banned. And you'll notice that I have added my own custom text. Don't ask me how I did that. If you want to know how to make your custom text, ask Zotom to in the Discord. Because that's how I found out how to do it. And custom text is also banned, in case you're wondering. So the only one that's actually allowed is frame limiter. Now, Talking about the frame limiter, you're going to want to go into the settings because normally the game plays at an unlimited frame rate and this makes the physics really wonky and broken. So you're going to want to not do that. You're going to want to go on, you're going to want to go into the frame limiter settings. You just right click and click on settings. I believe this is normally set to well, I don't know what it's normally set to, but if you're starting out running the game, I would advise you set this to 60 FPS. Um, once you start getting better times, maybe once you get around 150 or something, I would advise you to change it to higher frame rates, such as like 110 or 120 or... I normally play at 119 FPS, but it's entirely down to you, I would tell you to just do some playing about with it. 
just play the game because the reason you want to do this is you want the physics to be slightly broken but not enough that it makes the game very hard to run you want it enough because if you play at high frame rates whenever you're driving down slopes it'll give you a speed boost but it makes the rest of the game a lot harder to play at so that's why normally if you're starting out you just want to play at 60 so oh yeah and you'll need to make sure that these two things here are unticked especially this one you do not want that one I'm not sure that menus matters that much but you'll definitely want to make sure that loading screens is unticked because that'll make your loads about five million times worse I guarantee so please I cannot stress enough you need to have that unticked but apart from that everything should be fine there so I think that's all that really needs to be covered in the uh, mod launcher. Oh yeah, and all these other mods, stuff that I downloaded from Donut Team's website, you'll not want to use them either. As I said before, all mods are banned except for the frame limiter. Some of these should be fairly obvious, like Donut Mod, for example. Uh, it should be fairly obvious that you're not going to be having that on while running the game, saying as it is basically an entirely different game. So yeah, that should be all that needs to be covered in the mod launcher, and now I'll be able to get started with the actual game. Alright, so, now we're actually into the game. So, well first thing, for anyone that's on PC as well, I'm going to need to go into options, and make sure that everything's set fine with you, so your display, controller very important, you'll probably want to connect the controller to your computer, so you'll just have to do that on your own, and then configure all the buttons. If you've done it properly, then it should look something like this. Settings. And then you're signed. I already have all mine configured. Um, so, and I'm using I'm using the PS3 controller for my whenever I play, because I originally started playing this on the PS2, so it was the most comfortable for me to switch to. But you'll probably use one of your own controllers, like an Xbox 360 controller or something. So, I can actually start into the game. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the game, if this is your first time playing through the game, it won't bring up this text box. As soon as you hit the new game, it'll just immediately start playing the game. But if you have any uh, save files or any, if you were ever playing the game before doing this, then it'll bring up this menu. So then time starts whenever you hit yes. Just got a cutscene. Alright, so now we're on to the actual game. So what 
you're gonna do is you're just gonna run right, press triangle, just run right, spam triangle, talk to Marge, then hit X to skip through all the dialogue, and then you'll be left with something like this. So you press circle to run, and then triangle, you get on top of the car. It's one thing to note is whenever Whenever you get into a car, it'll play an animation of you like opening the door and then climbing in. But if you jump on top of the car and then try and get in, then it skips that whole animation. So you're going to want to do that every time you enter into a car. So you're just going to want to drive over here. Run into this. And then just enter the building. Now you're gonna want to talk to Apu. Then just hit. It. You're just gonna want to spam pause. So, depending on whether you have it mapped out or not on your controller, it'll either be on the start button or just escape on your keyboard. Either way, you just want to spam it until you get into this. Then go to mission select, and then select the next mission. Same thing, just run over, spam triangle, and then X, collect this, get on top of the car, so one thing to note is you'll need to get a lot of coins during this run, because there's a few cars that you have to buy to continue the game. To unlock certain missions. Also, what I just did there is I reset my car as soon as I hit that vending machine. You should have that mapped on select if you're playing on PS3 controller. That's what it's normally mapped to. So you just want, you'll be using that button a lot in this game. Trust me. So that there, if you hit. If you look backwards for a couple of frames, then immediately put the camera back forwards, it can despawn cars that are a certain distance away. So I have that mapped on R1. It's just something you'll need to get used to. Because the traffic in this game can be very annoying. I'm come up here, get this box. Boxes have a lot of coins in them, so you'll want to get a lot of them. I'm using the newest coin route. So you come around here, get that freebie. It's actually harder than it looks to get that freebie. Because the way freebies work is um, the hitbox of Homer is still active inside the car, and the way that you kill wasps is. If the hitbox of your foot connects with the hitbox of the wasp. So if you manage to make the hitboxes line up inside the car, then it counts as kicking the wasp and you'll get the coins from it. It's finicky to say the least because the hitboxes on the wasps are very interesting sometimes. So don't always expect to get freebies. So you will come up here kill that wasp, get that box with a double jump and then grind pound, collect all these coins, if you've done it right you should have about 270 coins at this point, and go into the school, run right, just spamming triangle and X. The second actual mission. So 
this time you'll want to run over here, jump on top of this bush, and then just hit triangle. It'll immediately put you inside. Talk to Marge, and go back outside. Run over and get your car. Again, get on top of it. Then drive over here. And just sl The best way to slow down in this game is to hold both um, the button to get out of your car and the button to reverse. It's the best way to sl slow down. Talk to Flanders. Normally you'll be closer to your car than this. Right, so... It's very easy to reset on this mission because traffic can just completely ruin everything for you. Look at that. If you've done that bit correctly, like pretty fast, then you should get a 150 left on the clock. Let's so just park here next to Barney. Go talk to him, collect this, get back in the car. Collect these to the spending machine and box. And just drive over here. For that one, there is a way to do it without actually touching the collectible. You still collect it, but it's interesting to say the least, so I wouldn't recommend doing it at the start. It just leads to a lot of resets. Turn your car. Okay, you want to try and turn your car so you're facing like this. Stand on top of the bonnet, and then jump and get that collectible. And then just turn around and drive back to Flanders' house. But before you do that, you're going to want to come over here, slow down. Yeah, that's too short. You can get a freebie there if you're driving slightly faster than that. As you can see, the hitboxes on the walks are very interesting. Then you reset your car. Then you drive over here, turn around, park in his driveway. Come over and talk to him. What happened there is normally it plays an animation whenever you complete a mission, but if you jump before that animation starts, then you don't have to watch it. So you're going to want to do that every time you complete a mission. You're going to want to spam X so you can jump. So now we're on to the third actual mission, and the first destruction mission in the game. These are probably the missions that we want to optimize the most, because they can lose you the most time. Because you need to destroy a certain car or cars, and if you don't do it quick enough then it loses a lot of time. So, yeah, so this is the office. So you just, whenever you complete the mission, you just want to drive over here and then get out. Talk to Marge. Run back out. It doesn't really matter if, if you park beside those plants, then you don't have to jump on top of your car. It interrupts the animation anyway. Because basically how that works is, if any, if the door is blocked for any reason, then it automatically puts you in your car. This is, okay, now I've got a first actual trick in the game, and it's not even a big one. This is called Lenny Skip. So you're, wanna gonna, you're gonna want to slow down coming along this road, and then move, move on to the pavement here. You're gonna want to move on there as late as possible, and you're gonna, just, you're gonna want to push Lenny, who's there, all the way over there to Barney, so you can talk to them beside each other. Don't expect to get it the first try, because Lenny tends to jump out of the way for no reason. So then you just talk to him. Don't get back in your car, that's not optimal. And then buy the Plow King, which allows you to start the mission. Now, there are two strats for this mission. 
I'm going to show you the beginner strat first and then there's a slightly more advanced strat which relies on traffic RNG so I'm just going to show you the normal strat first so you'll run over here to the telephone box get your normal car and get in and drive down to uh, Quickie Mart So now you're going to want to turn around and try and get a head-on collision with Smithers and then immediately turn around because you're going to want to try and push him in here. If he turns around and then starts driving into this wall, you've done it right. And you just want to keep reversing and then as soon as he starts moving, drive forward again. And then he's dead. So now I'm going to show you, well first I'm going to show you the backup if you don't uh, get him trapped there. So I just have to drive all the way back over to the Christie Burger and talk to Lenny again. But this time I don't have to do Lenny skip. Actually no I do. Uh, yeah, basically the mission won't start until you actually have your the car that's required. See, I didn't get Lenny skip there because he dived out of the way. See, the mission doesn't start unless the vehicle required is on screen. So I'll have to go over to the phone booth, then get the Plow King, and go back to the family stand. So that's why it's not that optimal to buy <coughs> to buy the plucking first before talking to Lenny, because then you'll just have to uh, just swap around your car and stuff. So now this is the backup strat if you don't get him stuck at that wall. You'll just have to practice getting him stuck there. I mean, sometimes the traffic will just mean that you can't get it, so see, I didn't get turned around immediately. So what you're going to want to do is try and push him into one of these two trees here. Then drive away, turn around, try and get another head on with him. Now, up ahead, there's a little wall over here, and there's a fence beside it, and there's a little bit of invisible terrain that comes out between the two at the start of the fence so you're going to want to push Smithers into that invisible wall because it does basically all of his health and there was traffic in the way so what would happen is he would hit a little bit of terrain here and that would do basically all of his health bar I didn't get it because there was a traffic car in my way so what you're wanting to do now is try and get him stuck at this house and then blow him up. Uh, so now I'm going to show you the advanced strat. Well, it's not really an advanced strat as such. It's more just something you go for if you're going for a really good time because it saves a lot of time. Is you try and get a traffic car. I'll go over what traffic cars you want whenever we get there. But basically you'll want a traffic car because for some reason they are faster than the car that you normally get. See I got Lenny skip but I'm not pushing him to the right place because I need to go over to the phone booth get the plow king. Can you come and get me? You so what you're going to do is you're going to turn around. See this it, This here is the car you want. This um, little pickup truck thing. So you'll want this. 
or uh, that mini this minivan thing that is also acceptable but this is the one you really want the pickup truck so it's because this car is slightly faster than the family sedan and that means that you can destroy smithers a lot quicker now there is an even faster strat where you uh, push smithers into the wall then you drive into the wall yourself so your car is basically destroyed then you blow up your car it does all the damage on smithers and then you just have to grind pound on his car and it'll explode now that's a ridiculous strat to get for robot crocodiles the uh, current world record holder he's the only person to have ever gotten it so don't even try going for Okay, so now you're going to move on to mission 4, Blind Big Brother. Now this mission is entirely based on cycles, which you might or might not make. So, I'm going to kick this box and then hit this button. And I jump for this. Now whenever you make this jump you want to delay it so that you land on that uh, power coupling one of those if you land on this railing here then it makes you sit through the whole animation of homer's landing which means that you'll most likely miss the cycle so you want to delay your jump so that you'll hit the power coupling instead of the railing again jump for this one So you want to be running the whole time, by the way. Now you should make the... If you did everything right, then you'll be able to make that cycle. So you should finish the mission with about 2 minutes and 58 or 59 seconds left on the clock. And get this vending machine. And then that's that mission over. Right, so now you're on to... <clears throat> Mission 5, Blind Big Brother, or not Blind, uh, Flowers by Irene. So you'll first have to sit through this really long cutscene. And there's nothing you can do to skip this that we know of, so you just have to sit through it. restart mission so it will put you outside and in your car so this is a follow mission and the way they work at least in the first few levels is that the closer you are to the back of the follow car the uh, faster it'll go so you want to try and stay as close as you can to that to the follow car get these boxes and vending machine just try and despawn some traffic they're gonna come in here to Cletus's back garden nice try and get the freebie here didn't get it that freebie entirely depends on where the wasp camera spawns so if it spawns really far to the right and I got the black man getting stuck that usually happens if he takes a wide turn around that corner and then he gets confused as you can see basically the AI in this game isn't very good
You know what, I'm just gonna restart the mission. If you get that kind of AI where it gets stuck and then starts driving in circles, then that would be the end of a run. So you're better just restarting the mission. Well, I'm better restarting the mission anyway. Like, even at low level play, I wouldn't even recommend continuing a run if you get that kind of AI. If you get that, then I would just recommend resetting. But now I have a second try at the freebie. Didn't get it. Because it spawned really far to the right. This time he should go through. See, that's what it would normally be like if he doesn't take a white turn. So now you're gonna want to hold circle to slow down. Get that vending machine, then start driving forward again. You can also uh, flip the camera to despawn some of those workers. Okay, now I another chance for a freebie. Didn't get them. There's two wasps there. And you can get either one of them. That one's a bit finicky. Don't worry if you don't get them, they're not that important. Plus, you have a second try. my mouse was still on screen for whatever reason. So now this is mission six. So you're gonna want to destroy this vending machine then talk to Marge. So ideally you'll want to get all 10 crates before you reach the shortcut that goes over the Quickie Mart or somewhere around that. So what you're going to want to do is as soon as you hit the Bone Storm truck you're going to want to slow down so that you get enough speed that you can actually get a hit. This was a bad bone storm, so I won't be able to. Actually, never mind. I might still. Nah. Because so that was a bad bone storm. Normally, if you get a good one, you would go through that shortcut that was on the left. If you get a bad one, then it's not that bad. You can come over here, get that vending machine, try and turn away. Just drive back to the Simpsons house. And jump to skip the animation. Then you're going to want to run across the street, go to the phone booth, and get the family stand before warping to uh, mission 7. Because there's a big skip coming up next, and I mean really big. It saves about two and a half minutes. Oh yeah, and if you pause, um, you're going to want to pause immediately after warping, because it skips the camera zoom in, but it does. So then you get into your car, 
Now this is similar to Lenny skip from earlier. So you're going to want to knock over Carl and then slowly push him towards that door. What this does is a barrier will spawn as soon as you start the mission stopping you from going through here and you have to drive the whole way around the rest of the map. But if you push Carl in there before talking to him then it spawns you on the other side of the barrier so then you can take this really big shortcut around the whole map. So that saves two and a half minutes and it's a very big deal. Sometimes you want to go really slow. Oh nice, I got a freebie. So you want to go really slow while pushing Carl because if you go too fast then he'll just go underneath your car and then you won't be able to push him anymore. And then get out and talk to Mr. Burns. And then that's level one done. And then don't save your game. Because saving will cost a lot of time and now we're into level 2 which I will cover in the next episode.